Hey everybody, welcome back to Heart for Games. I'm Tony. I'm Dave Perfect Temperazzo. And I'm Bill. We have been graced with, well, disc one and two, two NR discs with a debug ROM of Tales of Symphonia mm -hmm. for our NR GameCube reader. For those of you that are unfamiliar with this particular title, Dave, what is it? Uh, it's an anime-based JRPG. Uh, there's a huge number of games in this uh, franchise, the Tales franchise. This is the fifth game. Obviously, there's a huge fan base behind this. It's spurred anime, it's spurred um, manga, it's spurred tons of fan base stuff. And one of the biggest things I've noticed in this game, and I really want to note, is that you know there is a multi-line battle system in place on this, which is very different from what the turn-based is. Um, it still has that feel of turn-based, but it's really more live action. You can switch different targets and things like that. And it's really kind of paved the way to the games after that as well. You could say it was a turning point. You could, Tony, you could. <laughs> Very good. So we're going to yes. go ahead and dive into the extensive debug features. We're going to talk a little bit about what debug features still remain in the retail version, and also hopefully uh, showcase one of the differences between this and the retail version that the owner mm -hmm. brought up to us. Hopefully it's actually a difference, because I've never played it. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so am I. Okay, so here we have the Tales of Symphonia Disc 1 in the NR Reader. And if you're familiar with the retail game, you're going to notice that obviously your options are a little bit different here in that you have a debug menu. So there are a lot of debug zones in this, uh, many of which have NPC characters that allow you to adjust things. Oh, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and experiment a little bit. Also experiment with just the different menus that we have, the different spaces, items, fog, there's a plethora of things that we can talk about and we're gonna to try to cover as much as possible. So as you can see in the corner here, there's a lot of information regarding uh, CPU, GPU usage, mm -hmm. player position, you have XYZ access right here. So obviously every time you move, Every time Lloyd moves, you can see that these numbers are flying all over the place. Uh, Minecraft's very similar to that. You can actually bring this up at any time. When you press start, you have an expanded menu. You can do a map change. You can mess with the camera. Uh, there's a ton of info. Yeah, wow. You can turn the debug mode off. And again, you also have that CPU info up here. So for example, I can turn the debug mode off and now I can't get back into that menu. So now we have to reset. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> uh, I'm sure there's a way to do it, but I don't know how. <laughs> I kept, I was messing around with it the other day and I kept doing that because there's, uh, there's debug information, no. And then there's also, you can turn off that CPU information. So that way you can more easily talk to the NPC characters and see what they're saying. Because otherwise you have text over text. So I kept trying to figure out which one was which and mixing them up and I kept, like just having to reset over and over again. It's debug, denug <laughs> info. And <laughs> you can go now toggle in and out of the menu. <laughs> Bless you. And not have that information. So we'll play with this stuff a little bit more in a minute. First, okay. let's explore the space. <laughs> and we explore the space, there we're done. <laughs> Spinning sky. Yep. And and this map looks similar to the one that we were messing around with in the retail version. Mm -hmm. So Tony, what do you think the purpose of this very small space with just a few NPC players is really about? What's we it really gonna do for the debug team? Often with debug stuff, you wanna test things in an isolated environment. So for example, here's a treasure chest, here's a box, here's some player characters, here's an item. You know, if you, when you're walking around, you can kind of notice that it looks like he's walking in a puddle. You see the little splash yeah. and stuff. So basically just different effects are turned on where they can experiment with stuff in different <laughs> areas that are more isolated, essentially. So let's go ahead and, and talk to them. Okay. <laughs> and it's funny because it's actually cut off. It really is. They didn't size the, <laughs> the text messages to the actual pixelation yeah. of the 
Yeah. And the screen. Yep. Right, so you can jump to different areas. So this is kind of a convenient way to jump to different areas as well. Ah. It's like a, a master zone that can get you a lot of different places. Yeah. Except normally when I go to a different area, I can jump back into the debug menu. It's not letting me do it in this case. No, we, we found in the world map, you can't do a lot of things. I think David looked yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. You had to be in a town. So here we are, map change. This is a good opportunity to show this. There's a ton of different maps and we can go ahead and just jump back into the one that we were in. I think there's about five or 600, if I remember That's properly. Quite a few. Mm. It's a huge game. It's like an 80 hour <laughs> game. <laughs> It must be holy shit. Fun fact, Star Ocean and Tales of Fantasia for the SNES or the Super Famicom were the two largest Super Famicom cards, 48 megabits. That's so I don't, I don't think there were any larger than that. I know that those two definitely were. 48 megabits um, in comparison, Chrono Trigger was 32. Mm -hmm. So you can set the battle control mode to however you want. Oops. Start up a Mr. Event Battle. <laughs> Mr. Event Battle. Wow. Let's just see what all of these have I'm to not say. Sure, uh, what that's all about. As good. I said no, but it's still sending me there. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the pastor, the priest. So a lot of these are just jumping to locations, which is interesting because, um, again, I pressed no and it's sending me there. You <laughs> you also have the the debug option where you can just kind of scroll through. And jump to it, jump yeah. in when you want, right? So they they just kind of included uh, both ways to do it for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. uh, they probably wanted to say, okay, how does it function when we try to do it through an NPC versus you know a debug, like a teleport sort of system? Yeah. So like, how would the player do it if he had to do this in game? Like you'd go yeah. up to this person, you'd have to choose a selection. So they probably wanted to make sure that was working. So yeah. And, anyway, I get that. And it's funny. I think you actually had to. If you scroll down, there's a third option. <laughs> well, that, that <laughs> option is no. Because yes <laughs> and no are not, up. they're not lined up properly. Oh, they're not lined up properly. Interesting, okay. So here it's jumping me into the cast, and there's a way to fast forward this. How, how do I do it? <laughs> here we go. You press B and it, it just... <laughs> so let's say it's like, did I spell... <laughs> yep, that's spell... Did I, did I spell that? Oh, uh, yeah, so many did names. Spell... And, yeah. yeah. You know, quite a bit of content here. But it doesn't let you fast forward through that final fade, which mm -hmm. is kind of funny. So let's go ahead and change to a different test map. Here we oh. have the save. And so now <laughs> you're gonna notice transparent window is turned on. It's very like Japan to have the NPC people you're interacting with be cosplaying <laughs> as cats, no less. Not that I'm complaining. So if you remember, I think we got stuck in the retail version That's from yeah, around there. there. Yeah. And around there. So some of these maps are in the retail version, but it's uh, imprecise mm -hmm. at best. Let's put it that way. Yeah. This is almost a little freaky. <laughs> Once again... <laughs> They really like this. Damage via NPC, damage via enemy. Mitten test. Yeah. <laughs> Executive pullback. I love how uh, this is not formatted properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they hadn't really put any effort into that at that point. Freezing wave. Yeah. Aqua test, fire test, interesting. Camera settings. Oh. Iron Chef. I think that, that's great. Some of the names are hilarious. I, yeah. I feel like if you're a puzzle test, a um, debug or a dev person, you put like a lot of fun mm. into this stuff. I'll yeah. just call it this because no one's ever going to see this. Like, and you can see that character yeah, sort of doing that. That Christ pose. Hmm. She's protecting the character. So yeah, it's very interesting that um, you know they've put NPC characters to take care of the events or you know any kind of selection whether it's you know making this transparent or not um versus just having a menu to do this like why would they even bother with doing that that's that's japan that's japan for you because it's just like you know 
Do we streamline this or do we make it cute? <laughs> <laughs> you know? All right, so here are all of your characters. Here's you. It's like a scene from Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> Movie. Oh, now I'm transparent. I wonder why you need to be transparent. Because <laughs> basically you're, you're giving party members away when you talk to them or you have them join. Interesting. So now she's joined you, so she's no longer there. Mm -hmm. But basically here you can play around with your party. So I can push Lloyd out of the party. <laughs> push yourself out of the party? Yep, I can push Lloyd back in the party. Oh, I love this one here because uh, it's half translated. <laughs> <laughs> so you have EA, hi. or hi, rather, excuse me, you have hi, which is yes, and then no, right? So it's, um... That is actually kind of funny. But there's a lot of different things that you can do here. So again, you can edit the camera. You can have it not follow you. Ah, uh, so it's a stationary position mm -hmm. yep. watching you go place. Okay. It's the old Resident Evil. <laughs> <laughs> so what I've noticed about this game and it's, it's, it's funny to me, is that, and maybe it's a very Japanese thing, is that it seems to be, you go through this game, and you're a dude, you start off by yourself, and you help the chosen one to hmm. regenerate the, the world, and you know, try to regain mana, but in my mind, it's just a dude trying to create his own harem with a bunch of women, <laughs> <laughs> while fighting monsters yeah. to purify the world, which is... That's fine too. Whatever, <laughs> whatever way you need to go about purifying the world is your thing. There's a bunch of women too. I mean, why go for it? You know, yeah, why not? So. we're not here to judge. <laughs> you press L and you have some additional options. Subject depth, collision. Oh, so you can turn the collision off, which is pretty cool. So you can, oops, you can walk through. Hmm. That's very interesting. <laughs> oh, okay, then you obviously... Um, that also means a terrain, apparently. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything beyond the skybox? I don't know. Oh, let's find uh, out. Oh, okay. Another, now you're just... Another skybox? Yeah. And now you're just... <laughs> Into the void. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh. Here's another option I forgot to tell you guys about. Is that, obviously, if you're debugging, you're testing, and you're like, oh, man, like, I really don't want to spend time you know, Funny. slowly meandering around, you can turn off the collision, but you can also press the C stick. And it just like flies you all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> so you can press the C stick in any direction, doesn't matter. And then you toggle where you're going normally, like with the, the joystick. Yeah. I mean, why not? You gotta get to different places and debug different things and... Yeah. Here's an option for fog. And it seems like whenever I do these, it always has to be like the extreme. Otherwise, nothing works. Yeah, they're just working with such minute differences on these games. There we oh, go. There Perfect. It is. Wow. You no, know what I mean? Like, it's red weird. Fog. Yeah. Red fog. We just had the right position in it, so. Now that's what I call red <laughs> fog. <laughs> Let's see if this does anything. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it's gorgeous. <laughs> it is. It's gorgeous. Look at that scenery. Now, if you, just in our casual playing, notice any differences between this and the retail version, definitely let us know in the comments below. Dave has played this game, mm. but when it came out. It's, it's been a while, yeah. I, I yeah, await same. your next visit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, magical podium. Like, uh, Ooh, battle? No. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I no, think, we don't want to do battles in the debug mode. I think I might have turned them off. Well, that's true. You probably just turn them off. It would be nice if you could use that L debug menu to sort of, you know, walk through walls on all the yeah. different areas. There might be some sort of an action replay code where you can you yeah. can do that, uh, since obviously the sure functionality really. is in the game somewhere. But yeah, you can't do it in game, and unfortunately, you can't even do it in all of the debug maps. Mm -hmm. And again, I have no idea what this room is supposed to be for, but you know, oftentimes when you go into rooms in games out of sequence, they exist outside of time. Oh, so for example, 
you know, let's say there's a particular room where a certain cutscene happens, well, X, Y, and Z is supposed to happen before that cutscene happens, and the cutscene hasn't happened. So you're entering the room, and there's no trigger for that thing to happen because those other things haven't happened. So mm -hmm. it, it's sort of, some things That's exist true. in time, some things Correct. exist it's, outside of time. So here's another difference between the debug ROM and the retail version. There is this sort of GameCube room where you have to fire your magic and it spins this around to open different areas. In the retail version, when this moves, the GameCube moves as well. In this version, it does not move. So you may be wondering what happens when you throw in disc two and go into the debug menu. Well, it gives you some text and basically tells you to put in disc one. Cool. And then it takes you to the debug menu. It's a hell of a disc. That's right. <laughs> a hell of a disc. It's funny because it still has that option, but it, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> so, whatever. So, fun fact, the retail version of the game actually has some debug maps in it. Yep. But it's not nearly as expansive. So just for fun, we're going to go ahead and showcase some of the debug maps, which can be accessed by an action replay code. Interesting. But you do have to be careful with this because sometimes you will just spawn in the middle of like a rock <laughs> yes. or something like that. Yeah. Try loading. Nope. And we're just in, in, in a, mountain. Yeah, we're in the middle of a <laughs> Giant bluff. Hill yeah. The bluff. Maybe if we go over here. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Still in a bluff. Still in a bluff. And that's the difference between utilizing a debug ROM yeah. and like hacking the game. That's exactly it, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Very different. And there, there, it, there, it, is. there it is. So, this is oh, different from uh, the other ones we saw. I'm sure you could probably get to this from the, uh, you know, the debug version, but this uh, gives you a whole bunch of different character options so you can mess with. You know, there are different properties, facial features, the bones. It's basically just orienting, orienting the uh, arms and legs and things like that, yeah. different degrees. And, you know, you're basically trying to debug the, the NPCs themselves and make sure that they're going to work well. Yeah. Facial expressions, skin colors. Mm. Of course, it's the cat outfit, <laughs> but we didn't expect anything less, so. Stopped. So if you've ever done these type of debugs with the NPC characters, this is actually pretty normal. I know when I've done um, JavaScript and Java in uh, Minecraft and things like that, um, you have to do the same thing when you try to set up NPCs. Mm -hmm. And it's just... How do they act? How do they look? What are they doing? Yep. Are they putting their mouths? You know, they're smiling. Are they gonna walk? Or, you know, so it's just very tedious, though. Yeah. And um, as you can see, Dave is trying his best to <laughs> do what he can. Make gets. them do something. Do oh, something hilarious, shit, and it might crash. That's <laughs> <laughs> all part of the debug process. Uh, so. That's right. <laughs> Unfortunately, with the retail version, for the different debug areas, you have to implement different codes. So it's sort of a tedious process, mm -hmm. unless, of course, you're using an emulator, in which case, you're cheating. Which is <laughs> fine. We're not judging. No, no, it's all good. It's no, really no the best way to do it is on an emulator. Yes, yes, absolutely. We're just doing it on real hardware because we can. All right, so I don't know if we've done this zone. We might have to do some guess and check again. Uh, yep. we, are <laughs> we are in the sky this time. <laughs> Which is different, but definitely in the sky. Ooh, all right. Oh, look at that, it works. So sometimes it'll put us in a bluff, it'll put us in grass, it'll put us under, under the train, and we can't yeah. do anything, right, Tony? Yeah, exactly. Um, Although I don't know if this will lead you anywhere. Oh, maybe. Oh, what? That's interesting. Spawn monsters. That didn't do anything. <laughs> that did nothing. Play the bed. Oh. Oh, oh <laughs> there oh. we go. That's cool. That's interesting. Oh, there's the monsters. That was the you spawned two minutes ago. And they're just terrorizing the people. So. What do you want to do? Nothing, because I have to destroy monsters now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Once again, NPCs in cat outfits. But they went in a separate. <laughs> made them meow. <laughs> oh, God. OK. 
Okay. I think that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was Tales of Symphonia, the debug version. Guys, did you have fun? Did you enjoy? What are your it was thoughts? Good. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, you know, a lot of similar things against uh, the other debug games that we played. So. Absolutely, it was very interesting. Uh, the way that they, they did the debug was very odd. It was just, you know, let's just interact with NPC players and instead of having a menu. Mm -hmm. um, and the NPC players had to be in cat outfits for some reason. <laughs> uh, also a very view into the developer's psyche, which is very, yeah. very interesting to me. Well, That's well, what I found. Well, there you go. I uh, did want to give a big shout out and thank you to Andrew for uh, letting us borrow Absolutely. these NR discs. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Cheers to you. Cheers to you guys out there. Thank you for subbing, clicking that notification bell, all that good stuff. We'll see you all next time. See you then. Okay.